Good morning to all my friends and teachers. On this feast day, Group 5 is presenting a small skit on the life of St. Teresa of Avila. It was a fine morning. Jim, Joanne and their mother were in their prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hey Jim, is everything alright? Huh? Yes, Joanne. Why did you ask? Nothing. You look uncomfortable during your prayers. Oh, that's nothing. Come, let's go. They went to the church for the Holy Mass. Jim was totally disturbed during the Mass and prayer. Jim and Joanne walked out of the church. Jim, something is bothering you. What's it? Huh? Hmm. Tell me, Jim, it's all right. Joanne, I have something to tell you. Go on. I am not able to concentrate while praying these days. When I close my eyes, immediately my friends keep popping up. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Is that it, Jim? Why are you laughing at? I am confused. I know I want to pray to God, but I am not able to. Don't worry, Jim. Have you heard about St. Teresa of Avila? St. Teresa of Avila? Who was that? She was a famous saint who lived in the 15th century. She had the same trouble as you are having now while praying. Is it true? Yes, Jim. Come on, cheer up. We'll ask Uncle Francis to find us a solution. That's a good idea. Joanne and Jim reached home. Why isn't Uncle Francis here? He is supposed to be reached by now. Relax, Jim. He must be on his way. Doorbell rings. Jim was excited. Hello, Jim. I'm Miss Francis. It's so good to see you. Ha <laughs> ha. What happened, Jim? You look like you have something to tell me. Uncle, Jim is having trouble during prayers. He is unable to concentrate. Ha! Huh? That's nothing to worry about. Relax, my boy. I told him that St. Teresa of Avila had the same trouble he has. You are correct, Joanne. It's true, Jim. St. Teresa of Avila had the same trouble you did. Can you please tell my story, Uncle? Of course I will. Now listen carefully. Uncle Francis started telling St. Teresa's story. St. Teresa was born in a small village called Avila in Spain in 1515. She lived during the time when women was not allowed to pursue any career and they were raised and trained to become good homemakers. As a little girl in her parents' rich home, Teresa and her brother Rodrigo loved to read the books on the lives of saints and martyrs. Hey, Rodrigo, tell me why you saints to enter heaven? What? It's true, you know, a person had to lead a whole life for a long time to heaven. But for saints, it's really easy. Is it true? It's true. Look at the lives of the saints. Yeah, what you're saying is correct. Hey, I have an idea. What is it? Do you want to go to heaven? Heaven? Yes, I do. You're so loud. Macho? You mean getting killed? Yes. Do you want to go to heaven? 
Yes, I do. The two children set out secretly to go to the land of the moors. As they walked along, they prayed that they may die for Christ. But before they could get far, their uncle found them. Teresa, Teresa, stop it! Who is it? Hey, what are you guys doing here? We are going to moors to get... We are going to the moors, uncle. What? Alone? Are you mad? Now come with me, I'll take you home. Oh. When the plan to get martyred failed, Teresa figured another way to see God. This time, she convinced her brother again to become hermits. They gathered stones in the garden and piled them up to build heritages. They wanted to build a hut to pray. But this plan didn't work out either as they couldn't find enough stones. Ha ha ha! Teresa's mother used to read a lot of books on fashion and beauty. One day, Teresa happened to see one of the books in which women were dressed in lovely clothes. Teresa was dazzled by it all. It seemed so attractive to her to be able to look pleasant and to feel loved by everyone. As she grew up, she started imitating those women in the magazines. She no longer craved for God, but she now loved to look at herself in the mirror. Teresa's mother died in a few years and that rattled her family altogether. Teresa, who was barely 14, cried inconsolably. She had lost her mother and in her grief, she prostrated herself at the foot of Our Lady of Grace. Mother, please help. Teresa grew into a charming teenager. She had the complete attention wherever she went. By the time she was 15, she was beautiful, witty, fond of clothes, jewelry and perfumes. She had a habit of reading romantic novels with knights and fairies. One of her older cousins came to live with them for a few days and she was fond of gossip and vanity. This older cousin influenced Teresa and Teresa now set the town of Buzz with her gossips. This caused her father sleepless nights. <laughs> Ha <laughs> you are truly naughty. Teresa's father decided that adult supervision was required for Teresa. Teresa was admitted to an Augustinian convent nearby. This place was like a finishing school where young women were taught social skills and things like cooking and embroidery. This period brought a change in Teresa and she started enjoying her life at the convent. She found a good friend in the Noah's mistress who taught her piety and goodness. This good companionship removed all bad habits that Teresa had. Teresa slowly recovered her faith in the Lord. She started thinking about becoming a nun. The influence of her devout uncle Peter, along with her reading of the letters of St. Jerome, Teresa was convinced that the surest way for salvation was to forsake marriage and other worldly pleasures. She decided to join the Carmelite order against the will of her father. But not long after she joined the order, she became very ill. She was brought home for treatment. Hmm. She is not responding to any medical treatment at all. I don't know what to do. She experienced severe pain and physical paralysis for almost two years. She was even expected to die when she went into a coma for four days. 
but she somehow recovered a little bit and insisted on returning to the monastery even though she remained in a painful and depleted state during the next 3 years teresa made a remarkable progress in her spiritual life through the intercession of saint joseph she miraculously recovered her health As her health returned, she lapsed more and more into a routine prayer life. Beginning at the age of 39, Teresa began to have vivid experiences of God's love. One day while she was praying, the Lord revealed himself to her only showing his hands. A few days later, Teresa saw a divine face. And then on another day Teresa saw the resurrected body of Lord Jesus. The vision was accompanied by a light so majestic that it could not be compared with others. Her continued prayers led to mystical experiences like the transfiguration of her heart. One day in her dreams an angel appeared to her holding a long spear. The tip of the spear was glowing with fire. The angel pierced her heart several times and when he drew the spear out Teresa experienced a great change in her heart. She was now filled with great love for God. Teresa's work reform began with herself. She was troubled by the worldly pressures such as wealth and beauty. She was also disturbed by the steady stream of visitors to the convent's parlor. Such things distracted her from her prayers and kept her from God. She then decided to follow the Carmelite as perfectly as she could but the prevailing atmosphere of the convent didn't help her Mother Superior I want to tell you something What is it sister Mother I find the atmosphere very disturbing and I am not able to concentrate properly during prayers I think our order has lost its way What are you going to say sister Are you saying that we are not following our rules properly? I think the order has become too lax and practicing our rules. Oh, how dare you? I am sorry mother superior, but I am going to leave this order. Leave this order? What are you going to do then? I had decided to start a new convent, a convent that would return to the basics of the contemplative order. A convent where we will live a simple life of poverty and prayers hmm and are you going to do this all by yourself no mother few other sisters here share my point of view as well they will accompany me in building this new order all right whatever differences we may have i wish you all the very best god bless you my child thank you mother Like I said before, I think the prayers can be best compared to watering in a garden. The four different ways to water a garden. The first stage of hers to devotion is like drawing water from the well by one's own effort. This is a slow and painful stage that we are filled drop by drop. We must wait and prepare our garden for life. The second stage is the prayer of the quiet. It is like a garden drawing water from a well with the help of a pulley. Our strain, our burden is much reduced, and we begin quite attached. And arriving at this stage, the soul begins slow desire of earthly things. There are fewer and fewer distractions. We are given over to Christ, and are transformed. throw him into more perfect person the third stage can be described as a garden that has been irrigated using water from a spring here the lord takes over and begins the gardener himself here we are in a state of perfect joy this stage is almost a complete union 
except that we are conscious of our ecstasy. The fourth stage, devotion of ecstasy or rapture is compared to water being provided by God in the form of rain. In this form of prayer, bodily sessions are lost in pure union with God. In this space time, memory and imagination melts away, leaving one and only the presence of God. Together with her friend Saint John of the Cross, she founded what is known today as the Order of Discalced of Carmelites. Discalced means barefoot, symbolizing the simplicity to which they chose to the order after a period of corruption. Teresa and John traveled far and wide to open more than 30 monasteries across the world. Teresa's health failed for the last time while she was traveling through Salamanca in 1582. She accepted her illness as God has chosen means of calling her to his kingdom. O oh my Lord and my spouse, the desired hour is now come. The hour has at last come. Where shall I pass out of this exile and my soul shall enjoy your company? What it has so earnestly so longed for. St. Teresa of Avila died on 15th October 1582. She was canonized on March 22, 1622, along with three of her greatest contemporaries, St. Ignatius Loyalo, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Philip Neri. In 1970, Pope Paul VI proclaimed St. Teresa as one of the two women doctors of the church along with 14th century Dominican St. Catherine of Siena. Her symbol is a heart, an arrow and a book and her feast day is celebrated every year on October 15th. That was such a good story, Uncle. Thank you, Jim. Did you see this thing had the same trouble as you while prayers? How can I concentrate more on my prayers, Uncle? It's easy, Jim. First, you should be relaxed during your prayer. Then, simply start talking to God as if he's a friend. You can say to him about how your day was or what your fears are. Just anything. Remember, Jim, God is always there, willing and eager to listen to what you have to say. That sounds so easy, Uncle. I'll try tonight itself. That's good, Jim. Why wait till tonight? Let's go and pray right now. That's good. You let me know how your prayers went tomorrow. It's time for me to leave. Goodbye, Uncle. Goodbye, Uncle. Goodbye, both of you.